Hero Shot, Parallax Effect, Orbit Camera Movement. I think everyone knows this kind of shots from Hollywood movies and I think everyone is able to recreate them in their own way, because this is basically a camera spinning around an object or talent. So the easiest way to get this effect is to simply run around with the camera. But if you care about precision and movements that you can repeat, I think you need something more professional. Stop that. There are several great options available on the market. You will find completely manual ones such as a Proem Compass and Digital Photo 360 Rig, as well as some motorized such as various types of photo boats and a very cool, most portable, completely silent option designed by Josh from the Make Art Now channel, which is called a marble. All of them are cool in their own way, but you know me, if I can build something, I definitely prefer to save a few bucks and besides, I wanted to have a much bigger payload. Don't get me wrong, because basically for this kind of shot, you don't need any heavy cameras or accessories such as follow focus or monitor, but I wanted to increase the payload to be able to use much larger lenses and a camera with a gimbal, of course not for stabilization, but as a remote camera head, because you can take even more cool and creative shots having full control not only over the rotation speed, but also over the movement of the camera. So let's build something cheap, something with a heavy payload and something that is fully adjustable. But first, the question, do we really need it? When you see this kind of rig, the first scene that comes to mind is dynamic shots of people, fashion, products, all kinds of beauty shots or super sexy slow-mo, but not only that. With this equipment, you can take really very unique shots that will be very difficult to achieve with other equipment. What's more, the talent doesn't always have to be in sight. If you turn the camera, then you can take great tracking shots. You don't need a camera dolly or steady cam, you don't need a follow focus, you don't even need a sound guy, because you can also put a microphone on the rig and basically you can shot the scenes totally by yourself and even in a small place. So, as you can see, I thought that if I was going to get one, I wanted to make it versatile enough that I can do a lot more than just one type of shot. So, what do we need? Four aluminum pipes, two aluminum plates, two keep connectors, two flange bearings, steel or aluminum shaft, two keep cross connectors, eight clamps for a 50mm pipe, a short piece of pipe and two double clamps. Now, here I will show you how to build a heavy duty version with a load capacity of up to 150 kg 75 on each side, but remember if you need a smaller version just for product shots and smaller cameras, you can use lighter and cheaper components, for example instead of 50mm pipe, you can use much smaller and lighter 35mm and the same with clamps, brackets and bearings. And what's more, the base can be made of some kind of wooden plate instead of aluminum, this will give you a huge difference in weight, size and of course price. We start by making a base which is basically a kind of table. All you need to do is find the center of the plate, then place the keep connector there, mark the exact mounting points and drill holes for the screws. In my aluminum plate I also made the side holes for mounting a larger table on it or for the extra clamps which I will tell you about later. What's more, you can even make the edges of the holes wider so that the ends of the screws will fit perfectly. Remember, if you don't have the tools for this, it's not a problem at all because for a few bucks in any workshop in your local area, someone will do it for you. To a plate already prepared in this way, we mount the keep connector. We put the connector to both plates, that is to the base and to the table. The next thing is the shaft, which is the backbone of this equipment. I use a still super heavy solid shaft here because with such a large payload, it must be strong and solid. But for a smaller setup, you can use just a regular aluminum pipe. Another thing is the bearing here. I found a super strong and solid super cheap bearing, which is already integrated into the flange. Now for smaller weight, you will totally need one such bearing, but for very heavy applications, I decided to use another one to increase their strength and durability even more. Mounting these bearings is super easy. All you have to do is place them on the shaft in the position that you want and tighten the special screws. The next thing is the pipe mount for which I use four 50mm clamps, a few washers and longer bolts with nuts. The bearing housing already has the holes ready so basically all you have to do is just screw the clamps into each of the four holes on the position. 
Now, at this point, I tighten the clamps only with my hands, and when the pipe is fixed in position, I use tools to fix them. Ok, so now we have the whole base ready. What's more, the size, length and position of the pipes can be fully customized, adjusted and replaced with any other size. The next step is to mount the camera. Here we have a few options. We can use a camera head, uh, we can put a tripod here, but the simplest way is a piece of short pipe and two of the cheapest clamps that I found. These clamps are mainly used for scaffolding, but they are also perfect for all kinds of rigging. Thanks to them, we have a horizontal crossbar on which, with a single extra clamp, we can mount the camera and what's more, we can also adjust the precise angle in a super easy way. Now, basically, the less basic thing is a contraweight. For this, I use a clamp with a long screw and some weights from the gym. And for lighter configurations, I use a regular sandbag. Now, how to calculate the right weight? If you place the pipe exactly in the middle, then it is very simple because you have to place exactly the same weight on the opposite side. Things get complicated when you want to move the pipe to either side. Here, you need a little net. Calculate the weight of the camera and mount, measure the length of the pipe on the camera side and multiply these two numbers. You get the result, which is the torque that you need on the opposite side for the perfect balance. Then divide this result by the length of the pipe on the counterweight side and you get the exact weight that you need to place on the end of the pipe. Example, the camera with lens and mount weighs 4 kg and I want the arm to be extended to 1.5 meters. So I have to multiply 4 kg by 150 cm, which gives me 600 kg of torque that I need for a perfect balance. Now, if the pipe on the other side is 50 cm long, then I have to divide 600 kg by 50, which gives me 12 kg as a counterweight at the end of the pipe. And that's it, super easy. Ok, now at this point basically everything you need for a simple shot is done, so it's time for improvements and some more modifications. First one, as an eye level camera. If you want to shoot with the camera from a higher angle, then all you need are two extra pipes and keep cross connector. All you have to do is put it on the end of the horizontal pipes and then put the vertical pipes on which you can put the camera in the same way as in the previous version. The length of the tubes completely depends on your preferences and the height of the place where shooting. Another improvement is a bigger base for more stability or a bigger table when you want to put something huge in there. Here you can basically use any kind of wood or metal plate and just screw it to the original base. Another option I use is an adjustable aluminum stand also based on pipes, which will work perfectly if you want to make your equipment easy to set up and portable. Adjustable design based on the clamps and tubes allows you to completely customize the size according to your needs. In fact, you need a few more clamps and pipes for this, but you get a really great and very stable base for even the most challenging shots. What's more, you can even make special adjustable legs to get the perfect level. Another upgrade will make this rig even more functional. You only need 4 additional clamps and you can use this rig not only as a standing rotating rig but also mount it upside down. Thanks to this we can now shoot all those things and people that were too big or heavy and didn't fit on a standard table. Here of course it's not the easiest things to do and you need a place that has this kind of possibility and mounts but I'm sure that in any professional even small studio you should be able to find a point to mount it this way. What's more, I still haven't tried it but it seems to me that a heavy duty tripod should be able to handle it. But remember here about safety, make sure you know what you are doing and make sure everything is securely mounted and completely safe for everyone around you. The last improvement I'd like to make in the future is some kind of precision servo motor drive which will give us a very precise and repeatable movement for more creative applications, but for now a manual drive has to be enough. Now in terms of cameras gimbals that you can put on it, well honestly you can put anything here. I use a couple of configurations, the first one is the RS3 Pro with Pocket 4K which is a great setup for all kinds of product shots. While for all the more dynamic shots, I use my favorite setup which is the Ronin 4D in the 4D Flex configuration 
because it is the smallest professional film camera gimbal you can imagine and working with such a small camera is really much easier and simpler. On the other hand, if you want to use a really big rig, you can put even a Ronin 2 Pro with a big camera on it and basically the only limitation is the weight which is a maximum of 75 kilograms. Keep in mind that this is a DIY version, so I do not have any special type of certification, but I have tested this kit with 75 kilograms on each side and everything works with absolutely no problems. Guys, as you can see, sometimes to achieve cool shots, you don't need a Steadicam or gimbal or any super complicated rig, and all you need is about $100 for some pipes, clamps and bearing. A complete list of all the necessary stuff is in the description under the video. I hope the video was helpful. Thanks for all your messages, comments and likes and see you in the next one.